Transcribe. Now listen to Father Knows Best, starring Robert Young as father. A half-hour visit with your neighbors, the Andersons. Brought to you by Crosley, makers of pace-setting products for happier living. Crosley Automatic Television. Oh, boy. Beautiful Crosley Shelvador Refrigerators, the world's most convenient. Wonderful Crosley Automatic Electric Ranges. Crosley Shelvador Freezers, Color Style Radios, and many other leading home appliances. The consensus of opinion regarding the origin of Valentine's Day holds the view that it had some connection with the mating season for birds. One member of the Anderson household, Bud by name, still holds that Valentine's Day is for the birds, and consequently he is not participating in the Valentine making operations now going on in the living room of the white frame house on Maple Street. Like this. Good heavens, Kathy, haven't you got enough Valentine's there? Well, I've got to have plenty. I've got to have some encasers. Some what? You know, encasers. You've got to have some extras in case somebody comes up and gives you a valentine that you didn't give one to. And you don't want them to know you weren't planning on giving them one all the time in the first place, hardly. Would you care to run through that again? I got lost. <laughs> well, that won't work, though. They'll know what you're doing because their names won't be on the valentine. Oh, Yes, they will. I'm going to have one for everyone in my room and put their names right on them. I've been figuring this thing out for weeks. Betty, the phone. I heard it, Mother. Hello? No, Bud's not here right now. Is there any message? Oh, well, just a minute. Mother, Mrs. Wilson wants to talk to you. Mrs. Wilson? I wonder what she wants. I hardly know her. It's something about Bud. Oh, dear. Hello? Yes. Where is Bud tonight? He said he was going to the library. Library? Bud? Oh, well, that sounds wonderful, Mrs. Wilson. And I'm sure Bud would love to come. What could possibly drag Bud to the library? Yes, I'll Oh, he said him. he had to look up something. Yeah, probably Joe Phillips. <laughs> A girl? Well, yes. All right. Fine, and thank you very much. What was it, Mother? Some kind of an invitation? Yes, a Valentine's party over at Freddie Wilson's. But I know Bud won't go. He's supposed to take a girl. Uh-oh, here we go again, the old battle. Why does Bud hate girls? Well, he doesn't hate them. He, well, he's just going through an age. I don't hate boys, and I'm going through an age. <laughs> you know, I think we ought to insist that Bud go to that party. Oh, now, Margaret, you can't force him to do it. But it's for his own good. I still say you can't force him to do a thing like this. When the right time comes along... He'll... When the right time for Bud comes along, he'll be drawing his social security. <laughs> well, maybe that's not a bad idea. Give him some spending money for his courting. <laughs> now, if I'd had any foresight, I... Jim. <laughs> I'm only joking, Margaret. Well, it's not very fun. Is that you, Bud? Yeah, Hi, Dad. Well, how's everything at the library? It's all right. See, uh, Kathy, uh, are you going to have any of those things left over? Valentine's? Yeah. Who are you going to give it to? Uh, nobody. Who is it? Just skip it. Bud's got a girl. I have not. <laughs> Kathy, be quiet. Uh, but before you go upstairs, Mrs. Wilson called. Mrs. Wilson? Freddie's mother. Oh, yeah. Did she? Was it about the party? Oh, you know about it? Yeah, Joe Phillips said there was going to be one. He's going. Uh, Bud, I think it would be very nice if you'd go. It was very sweet of Mrs. Wilson to invite you, and well, she... Well, I'm going. Oh, well, that's fine. <laughs> Guess what you have to take to it. Kathy, go out in the kitchen and get yourself a cookie. <laughs> but I'm not hungry. Well, get one anyway. <laughs> I've been thinking about the party. I'm going to take Eleanor Potter. Eleanor Potter? What's wrong with that? That's a girl. <laughs> Kathy, I think Bud knows perfectly well what a girl is. Bud, are you feeling all right? 
Sheriff, what's everybody staring at me for? It's nothing, bud. We're not staring. <laughs> it's just that certain members of this household are amazed to see nature follow its natural course without a lot of prodding and shaping by the feminine faction. What did you say, Dan? <laughs> uh, nothing. I just hope you'll have a fine time at that party, bud. Oh, I will. Joe's gonna be there. Well, I gotta get upstairs and finish some history. Good night, Mom. Good night, son. Hey, wait a minute, bud. When did you ask Eleanor to go with you? You didn't even know you were invited till you got home just now. Oh, I haven't actually asked her yet. What? Well, how do you know you're gonna take her then? Well, I... I just decided. <laughs> what makes you think she'll go with you? Oh, I don't know. Just the way she looked at me in the library, I guess. Uh, well, Bud, did you discuss the possibility of taking her to the party? Oh, I didn't talk to her. Just sat there and stared at her, huh? I didn't stare at her. I pretended I wasn't even looking at her. Some romance. <laughs> well, Bud, you should call her up right away and ask her. Oh, gee, Mom, I don't know her number. It's in the phone book. All you have to do is look it up. Well, it's, it's such small print they use. Gives me a headache. Bud, I'm not going to listen to any more excuses. You've got to call that girl this minute. I've changed my mind. I'm not going. What? <laughs> I, I got to get on that history. Good night, Mom. Bud, you come back here. Let him go. But, Jim... Leave him alone. I told you you couldn't force him. Well, we can't just let him go on like this. He'll grow up to be a... a Bum? A... <laughs> <laughs> Kathy, you keep out of this. Margaret, Bud is no different from any other boy. Things like this just naturally embarrass him. Well, what are we going to do? Just let him go on being naturally embarrassed the rest of his life? No. There are ways of solving this. It just requires a sane, calm approach. A little psychology. And uh, understanding. Hey, Mom, have you seen my history book? No, I haven't. All right, Jim. Here's your chance to approach sanely and calmly. Oh, I hardly think this is the time to... I'd love to see how it works. All right. All right, I'll do it. Bud, will you come down here a minute? What do you want, Dad? Uh, just come down here a minute. I uh, want to talk to you. Uh, I've got a lot of studying to do. I said come down here. Okay. Boy, Daddy's sure good on that psychology. <laughs> uh, hurry up, Bud. I'm coming. Come on, we'll uh, go into the den. Okay. Kathy, you better start cleaning up this mess. Uh, go on in, Bud, and uh, sit down. Look, Dad, I... It's am... all right, Bud. Sit down. Relax. This is just a friendly chat. Oh? Uh, how are things going at school? Okay. Uh-huh, good. Uh, how are you coming along with basketball? You guys got a good team this year? It's okay. Uh-huh. Uh, but there are times when we fellas have to stick together. Now, um... I know how you feel about this party thing. I've decided not to go. Well, that's up to you. Nobody's going to force you. I know exactly what you're going through. I went through it myself when I was a kid. Only I was older, about 18. Yeah, that's a good idea. I'll wait till I'm 18. <laughs> well, suit yourself. But uh, the longer you wait, the uh, more embarrassing it gets. Well, Dad, I wouldn't mind going to the party, but gosh, calling up a girl. I don't know. I can't ever think of anything to say. Well, you don't need to worry about that. No? No. It's possible to spend a whole lifetime with women with no more vocabulary than yes, no, is that so, and how much does it cost? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh... Why don't you give, uh, uh, what's her name, a call? Eleanor, is it? Yeah. Well, maybe tomorrow I'll... You uh... can use the extension here in the den so you won't have a bunch of curious females listening in. I'd better think about it for a while. Bud, I've pointed out to you that there's no reason to be afraid to call her, haven't I? Yeah. And you want to go to the party, don't you? Yeah. And you want to take Eleanor, don't you? Yeah. And you know you've got the call tonight because tomorrow's too late, don't you? Yeah. All right, then. You're certainly not a coward, are you? Yeah. 
<laughs> oh, now, Bud. But, Dad... Get but... on the phone and call her. But, Dad... Bud. I don't know her number. Well, I'll find it for you. Great Scott. I don't know where you get that stubborn streak. Let's get it from your mother's side. <laughs> What's the girl's last name? Parker? Potter. Potter. Let's see. Potler, Poke, Pomeroy, Porter, Pot. Oh, here we are, Potter. <laughs> oh, there are five of them. Do you know where she lives? On Sycamore. 813? Uh, Could be. All right, here it is then. Circle 4479. Four, I think I'll wait till I'm 18. <laughs> But the number is circle, 4479. Now dial. But, Dad... Dial it. Here. Take the receiver. No. Okay. Circle, 4479. Steady, boy. There's no need to be so nervous. All you're doing is just calling a girl, not going into battle. What? What if her dad answers? Just ask for Evelyn. Uh, Eleanor, I mean. Hello? It's not her dad. It sounds like her. Well, better yet. Start talking. Tell her what you want. Uh, hello? Uh, say, this is Bud Anderson, and I, uh... <laughs> 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 well, uh, 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 Fetty Wilson's uh, having a party, and could I go... <laughs> I mean, uh, <laughs> uh, uh, could you go with me? <laughs> Bud, why did you hang up? She said yes. <laughs> That's great. You didn't even tell her when the party was or when you'd call for her or anything. You better call her again. Again? Oh, no. Well, you've gone this far. You can't leave that poor girl hanging in midair. Now call her back. Dad, I just can't. Why not? Oh, I don't know. I can't explain it. It's a feeling down on my stomach. Well, somebody's got to call her. Give me the phone. I should have waited till I was 18. <laughs> Let's see, that number was, uh, circle 4497. Uh, don't tell her why I can't call. Tell her I just got laryngitis or something. Yeah, yeah. Hello? Uh, say, this is Bud Anderson's father, and when Bud called you for a date for Freddie's party just now, he forgot to tell... What's that? Are you sure? Well, that's peculiar. Well, <laughs> I'm sorry to have bothered you. Goodbye. Well, son, you certainly fixed yourself up just dandy. What do you mean? She said you didn't call her at all. You dialed the wrong number. What? You've got yourself a date, all right, but who with, we don't know. <laughs> what cities would you visit to watch the top performers of show business in action? to see the champions of the sports world battle for supremacy. Actually, you need go no farther than your own living room when you own Crosley Automatic Television. For Crosley brings you television at its finest. Television that's five ways automatic. Just tune a Crosley to any channel. Here's what happens. Crosley's antenna selector automatically adjusts the dual built-in antenna to bring you the best possible picture. Notice, too, that the Crosley power control automatically boosts the signal to give you strong, clear pictures, even in areas where reception is often poor. Then the Crosley picture lock automatically keeps that picture steady, while the Crosley interference control virtually eliminates picture disturbances. And thanks to the exclusive Crosley Unituner, when the picture's right, the sound's right automatically. I'm sure you'll agree, here's television at its best, automatic television, that invites you to sit back and relax while you enjoy the clearest, steadiest picture in television. Believe me, you'll thrill, too, to the beauty of Crosley's authentically styled cabinets. And what's more, you'll find Crosley is priced to make you doubly happy. Yes, let Crosley bring television at its exciting best into your living room. See your Crosley dealer tomorrow. <laughs> The course of true love for young Bud Anderson is running less smoothly than Shakespeare ever predicted it would. As a result, the white frame house on Maple Street is the scene of some rather frantic research. Like this. Well, think hard, Bud. Who did it sound like you were talking to? I told you, I don't know. Haven't you any idea? 
It must have been somebody your own age or she wouldn't have accepted your invitation. That's just it. It might be some old woman, about 26. <laughs> Didn't you recognize the voice? All I heard her say was hello and yes. Some conversation. Oh, if he'd only asked who he was talking to. Jim, you were standing right there. Why didn't you prompt him? He hung up so fast, I didn't have time. Besides, the basis of the trouble is his dialing a wrong number. I hope all of you take this as a good lesson on the value of being accurate. I think I'll go to bed. <laughs> no, now, wait. We've got to get this straightened out first. Bud, when you looked up the number in the phone book... I didn't look it up. Dad did. Yes, and I know it was right because I've double-checked it twice since then. Oh, well... But who are some of the other girls in your room? I can't think of any of their names. Look, this can all be solved if we just take a calm, sane approach. Oh, sure. Look where the last calm, sane approach got us. Was it my fault Bud dialed the wrong number? I was nervous. <laughs> all right. Now, let's look at this objectively. We've simply got to reason out some logical mistake that Bud might have made. First, let's uh, assume he got the prefix right. Circle. Now, let's see if there are any other girls in his room who have a circle prefix. They all do. Everyone in his school lives in the same area, so they've all got the same prefix. Well, all right, then let's work on the numbers. He was trying for 4479. Hey, I know somebody whose number's near that. Inez Grebler. Oh, no. <laughs> her number's circle 4577. All right, that's a good starter. Kathy, you call her and just uh, casually ask if she's going to the party. Don't do that. If it's her, I know I'm not going. <laughs> Go ahead, Kathy. If she's the one Bud called, she's bound to mention it. All right. And be sure to dial it right. Hey, the phone sounds dead. Well, it can't be. We just used it a few minutes. Oh, wait a minute. Bud probably forgot to hang up in the den. You were the one who used it last. Huh? Oh. Oh, yes. Well, it's a mistake anyone could make. <laughs> I'll go hang it up. Holy cow. Every little mistake around here is blamed on me. All right, now try it, Kathy. Okay, Daddy. See, Bud, it's not hard to get these numbers right if you just watch what you're doing. Who asked you for any advice? Uh, is it all right now? Uh-huh. Hello, is this Inez? See, Bud, she asks who it is. Mm. Well, this is Kathy Anderson. Oh, nothing. I was just wondering if you're going to that Valentine's party at Freddie Wilson's. Oh, why aren't you? There's a real diplomatic question. <laughs> yes, he's going, but he doesn't know who he's taking. Does she have to tell everything? Uh-oh. What's the matter? Inez says if Bud doesn't know who he's taking, she'd be glad to go with him. Oh, no. Let's uh, not get another one mixed up in this. Tell her he's already uh, got a date. Hello, Inez. See, Bud's already got a date. Oh, I know I said that, but I meant he didn't know who his date was with. Oh, that little blabbermouth. <laughs> he asked you on the phone, but never found out who he was talking to. <laughs> yeah, he sure is. <laughs> Dad, make her hang up. Yes, Kathy, hang up. You've said enough. Well, I have to hang up, Inez. Yes, if you find out who she is, let Bud know. <laughs> <laughs> Goodbye. Holy cow, now it'll be all over town. Well, maybe that's good. If the girl finds out that Bud doesn't know he's got a date with her, maybe she'll reveal herself. Whoever she is, she won't want to miss the party. I hardly think we can bank on that. See? There she is now. I wish it was that simple. Bud, your door. I'm not going. It just might be her. Oh, now that's silly. Well, I'm not going to the door. I'll go, Mommy. All right. Bud, maybe at school tomorrow you can sort of inquire around and find out... I'm who... not going to school tomorrow. <laughs> what? Everybody will be laughing at me. Oh, they will not. You're just building this up in your mind. Nobody's going to bother about... Hey, Daddy was right. It's her, all right. It's oh, her. Wait, kid. What do you mean, it's her? Bud's day. It must be because she wants to see Bud about the party. Uh-oh. Who is it? Opal Jensen. Oh, no. <laughs> Bud, you come back 
here. You've got to talk to this girl. Not me. Now, don't go down in the basement and hide, Bon. <laughs> oh. Well, I guess we can't force him. That's the point I've been trying to put across all evening. What about Opal? She's waiting out in the living room. Oh. Oh, yes. Well, someone has to explain this to her. Jim? Don't look at me. <laughs> well, your calm, sane approach got him into it. Oh, all right. Explain it as gently as possible. Sure, sure. Can I listen, Mommy? Of course not. Why, oh, why didn't I keep my big, fat mouth shut in the first place? Oh, I'm sorry to keep you waiting. You're, uh... Opal, aren't you? Yes, sir. Well, won't you sit down? Well, thank you, but I can't stay but a second. Well, this won't take long. You uh, wanted to see Bud uh, about the party? Yes, sir, but you'll do just as well. You see, when that phone call came, I didn't get a chance yes, to... Yes, I know. It was rather abbreviated, but uh, the fact of the matter is, Opal, uh, well, you see, Bud... Um, well, Bud doesn't think it's going to be much of a party and wondered if you really wanted to go. Oh, yes, I'm looking forward to it. I've got a new dress to wear to it. I was afraid of this. What did you say, Mr. Anderson? Uh, nothing. But about that call... Yes, I, I know. I tried to call back, but your line was out of order. Oh, yes. Well, uh, someone just left the phone off the hook. So uh, all I could do was come over and... Yes, I... well, uh, will you wait here a moment? Oh, sure, but I can't stay long. Oh, I'll be right back. How'd she take it, Father? Margaret, do you suppose there's any chance of talking Bud into taking this girl? She's going to be heartbroken. She even bought a new dress to wear to the party. Where is Bud? Still hiding out in the basement. I better have a talk with him. I don't think it's any use. Bud! No. <laughs> well, I guess that answers that. Better go in and tell the girl. Margaret, why don't you talk to her? I'm not very good at this sort of thing. It's more of the kind of thing a couple of women can talk over. Oh, all right. I might have known I'd have to do it. Remember, a good, calm, direct approach is the best. Oh, hush. <laughs> Hello there, Opal. I'm Mrs. Anderson. Pleased to meet you. I'm sorry we kept you waiting, but there's been a terrible mix-up. I was beginning to wonder. Well, it's kind of difficult thing to explain to you, and please try not to be too disappointed. Disappointed? About what? About not going to the party. But I am going. I'm going with Stevie Long. What? That's what I came over to tell Bud. But I don't understand. When Bud called you, he said you accepted him. But that's just it. He didn't call me. That's what I tried to tell Mr. Anderson over the phone. Mr. Anderson? Yes, and if he hadn't hung up so quick, I would have told him to tell Bud that I already had a date. Oh. <laughs> I think I'm beginning to see the light. Oh, this is... <laughs> What's so funny? Did I say something? No, dear. Not you. It's my husband. He's the one who dialed a wrong number. Not Bud. <laughs> <laughs> what did you say? Well, it's hard to explain. But, well, actually, Bud called Eleanor Potter for a date. But then Mr. Anderson, in trying to call her back, dialed your number instead. Anyway, you'll never know how grateful I am to you. I don't exactly know what for. <laughs> well, it doesn't matter now. Just do me one favor, Opal. If you see Eleanor, tell her that Bud will call for her about 7.30 tomorrow night. Oh, yes, I will. Thank you very much. I hope you have a wonderful time at the party. Thank you, and good night. Good night. <laughs> What's all the laughing for, Mother? Yes, what's so humorous about breaking a poor girl's heart? I didn't break any heart. Betty, tell Bud to come up out of the basement. I have news for him. Okay. Well, what happened? What did you tell her? Oh, um, I, um... Bud! No. <laughs> it's all right. She's gone. You can come up. You sure? Bud, come up here. Your mother wants you. Okay. Well, tell us what happened, Margaret. What's she going to do with that new dress? Wear it. What do you want, Mom? I just want to tell you that Opal is going with Stevie Long and you have a date with Eleanor Potter. What? What's that? And you're to call for her at 7.30. Holy cow! Margaret, how on earth did you do it? 
Don't you know? Of course I don't. Don't keep me in suspense. How did you do it? Very simple, dear. I just used a calm, sane approach. <laughs> You know, friends, if you want to sit back, relax, and enjoy the finest television in the world, you want Crosley Automatic Television. Here's why. With Crosley, you just turn the famous Unituner control knob to get the clearest, sharpest, finest picture you've ever seen on any television screen. You see, Crosley automatically brings in clear, strong pictures, even in areas where reception is generally poor. And believe me, that picture is the steadiest you've ever seen. What's more, Crosley automatically eliminates virtually all picture disturbances. And with Crosley, when the picture's right, the sound's right, automatically. You'll agree, too, Crosley's authentically styled cabinets are the most beautiful money can buy. Tomorrow, then, visit your Crosley dealer. See beautiful Crosley automatic television in action. You'll be convinced. Here's the finest in television. Price to make you doubly happy. <laughs> Well, the night of the Valentine's party has arrived, and it looks as though young Bud's social career has at long last been successfully launched. His sisters have taken themselves to a movie, and the white frame house on Maple Street is witnessing a rare scene. Margaret and Jim Anderson sitting in their living room alone, like this. I wonder how Bud is making out. Oh, he'll get along all right now that the ice is broken. I just hope he had nerve enough to go over and pick up Elner after all that trouble. <laughs> Margaret. Yes? For the last time, how did you get that mix-up straightened out so easily? I know you're holding something back. <laughs> Come on now, give out. Well, I wanted to spare you in front of the children. Spare me? <laughs> yes. You see, when Bud tried to call Eleanor, he actually got her. It was you who called the wrong number. Me? <laughs> you mean that I... How could you have made such a mistake? Well, I don't know. I... Uh... If you had just checked whom you were talking to, all that trouble would have been avoided. <laughs> Somebody came in the front door. Who's there? It's me, Mom. <laughs> Bud, what are you doing home? You just left here. Mom, who took that call from Mrs. Wilson about the party? I did. Why? Well, next time, check the details. The darn party is until tomorrow night. <laughs> Now have more fun listening to the radio than ever before. See and hear the exciting new Crosley color-styled radios. They're magnificent performers, and they're equally outstanding for beauty. Decorator designed in a variety of brilliant color combinations, Crosley color-styled radios bring a bright new look to your favorite room. And Crosley's tone engineering assures you sharp, clear reception from stations near and far without fading or blasting. See Crosley's color style radios at your Crosley dealer tomorrow. Join us again next week when we'll be back with Father Knows Best, starring Robert Young as Jim Anderson with Roy Bargie's orchestra. In our cast were Gene Vanderpile as Margaret, Rhoda Williams, Ted Donaldson, Norma Jean Nilsson, and Gloria McMillan. So until next week at this same time, good night and good luck from the Crosley Division of the Avco Manufacturing Corporation, America's leading manufacturer of today's pace-setting refrigerators, television and radio sets, electric ranges, home freezers, and many other products for happier living. Father Knows Best was transcribed in Hollywood and written by Paul West and Roswell Rogers. <laughs> Hear City Service Radio Jubilee, February 18th on NBC.